the idea of bringing back Boris Johnson uh, to help campaign for the Conservative Party in the next general election is not an idea that we haven't heard before. We've heard it numerous times from Boris Johnson's allies and those in the pro-Boris camp still, because there still is one for God knows whatever reason, but there is still one. And their belief is very, very much so that if the Tories stand want to stand any chance, any chance in the next general election, then there has to be some serious attempt at trying to keep the red wall. This is why if you walk around the north anywhere at the moment, you will see billboards saying leveling up is here in an attempt to try and spin the fact that levelling up has been somewhat of a, of a success, or maybe you just haven't really noticed it. Guys, remember, levelling up, that thing that we promised, well, it's here, when in reality, it, it's not. <laughs> it's not at all. But, you know, they will try anything at this moment, even trying to bring back Boris Johnson. And I have to say this, if I was brought in as like the conservative campaign manager, if Rishi Sunak went, please help me, here's all this money, I'd go, well, thank you very much. That'll, that'll, that'll make a very nice holiday payment. Um, my first two actions would be, first of all, to buy a ball gag and a padlock and put it on <laughs> Liz Truss to make sure that she can't open her mouth and say anything stupid during this campaign and ban her from even leaving her constituency. And then I would buy a barge pole and just start pushing Boris Johnson as far away as possible I can with it. Um, Trust me, these are two figures you do not want anywhere near your general election campaign, especially in the Red Wall. Um, Boris Johnson, his popularity is gone in the Red Wall. He will go down like an absolute lead balloon the second he turns up anywhere in one of these Red Wall constituencies. Um, and it's at least good that the spectator is trying to tell, you know, Rishi Sunak, and bear in mind, of course, uh, spectator uh, George Osborne uh, in charge of that at the moment. Um, uh, basically saying, yeah, um, yeah, that's not going to help. <laughs> it's not going to help at all. But also, why on earth would you do this? Why on earth are you going to try and be so... Um, you know, try and bring him back as a, a, a as some sort of you know pro electoral force. What guarantee do you have that he is going to be loyal to Sunak during this whole thing? The idea that you can bring Boris Johnson back is something that you should would never even contemplate as a <laughs> as as an actual strategy. And yet, as we've said, bizarrely. There are still people thinking that because they still think Boris has that election magic and he can sprinkle his magic fairy just again and he'll win the Red Wall for us again. Um, yeah, those days, long gone. <laughs> long, long gone, that's for sure. So today we're going to go over this article uh, in The Spectator saying to Rishi Sunak why it would be a bad idea to do that. <laughs> so... Before we go uh, over and have a look uh, at that, please do remember to click on the like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and a one-off station link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. There's the YouTube thank you button. And of course, there's the Pony Club down below as well. Uh, and of course, it is Wednesday as well. So please do remember to go check out the this week's Pony Club video uh, and the Patreon members as well. You gain access to that as well. So let's crack on into this. Um, so this comes from The Spectator with the title of Boris Johnson won't help Sunak win back the Red Wall. So what are we make uh, what are we what are we to make of today's rather breathless story in the Times suggesting that Boris Johnson will make a comeback at the next general election? Um mm, no. Uh <laughs> no. Um it is the worst call ever that Johnson will make a, quote, comeback at the next general election. Yeah, Johnson is is done. He's spent as a political force because you just have to bring up uh, Partygate and he's gone instantly. Um, you know, people still have not forgotten that. Um, but anyway, it continues. So, 
Uh, the nature of return is being very much touted as very hard to pin down. An unnamed source quoted familiar with Johnson's thinking tells the newspaper that he is primed to campaign in the marginal constituencies and make speeches and appear on leaflets. Just as he has always supported the Conservative Party, he will do so now, it is claimed. Yeah, and even if making appearances in marginal constituencies, appearing on leaflets, making speeches, um, like I say, Lead balloon. <laughs> have you have you heard of this? Hindenburg. Um, that's probably the level you are going to see <laughs> at that time. <sighs> anyway, another unnamed source, it says, uh, this time over the government adds that there will be no joint appearance with Sunak, but that Boris is quote up for it, and the relationship between the two men is in a fairly good place. <laughs> Oh, a fairly good place? I, I don't I don't think so. I do not think it is in a fairly good place at all. So what is this all about? Is Johnson going to clear his diary and help his hated usurper out of the goodness of his own heart of, of overarching loyalty to the Tories? Or are we talking about a token effort? A couple of wet Wednesdays in Wigan and workshop and just a few photos of him with his honey monster arms draped around the shoulders of Clark Smith here for a, a here and a gales there. Um, even then, I don't think you can be trust that Johnson's going to be loyal because you, he, it's it's right he is the hated usurper. Why is Johnson going to help him out? Not only that, but the second he shows up, everyone starts on in with the the, the party gate stuff all the other stuff that Johnson was involved in, the you, know, you will be reminded of the absolute disaster that was Boris Johnson's premiership. It is not a good idea to remind people of that time. <laughs> but, hey, if they're desperate enough to do that, then be my guest. Um, uh, you know, Johnson will work the exact opposite of his electoral magic that he did in 2019. Anyway, uh, former cabinet minister and, of course, longtime Boris confidant Nadine Doris is in no doubt, claiming that on social media the report has been panicked, placed in number 10 in a bid to try and dissuade the Red Wall MPs from defecting to reform in the wake of the Lee Anderson saga. She says that there is no uh, uh, thawing of relations and no plans to the campaign and that Johnson and Sunak have not even spoken for over a year. And this is the other thing that a lot of people are now speculating this week, even myself, when we did the Lee Anderson announcement, when that came out. Um, where or are there going to be more defections? And to be honest, the place we're going to see it is at PMQs. If you get a number of Red Wall MPs who, let's face it, their prospects right now do not look very good. Their prospects right now do not look very good for retaining their seats. So, why not cross over while the crossing is good? <laughs> you know, make a bit of a political statement. Make the whole thing that, oh, it wasn't our fault. It was Rishi Sunak's fault. That's why we're crossing over to reform. And bear in mind, it's not going to take a lot to cause a substantial wave. It would only take about one or two. Maybe uh, even Gillis. Maybe even Miriam Cates crossing over. We'll we'll see where people's loyalties lie by the end of the week, but it would not shock me if there are people maybe threatening Sunak with a defection, and there are talks going on in the background to maybe try and calm that down, or maybe, should we say, a good old-fashioned witch hunt just to try and sniff out who might be next. <laughs> um we'll see uh well like i say we'll see tomorrow on wednesday that will be the day to do it if anyone really wants to sort of make waves so uh anyway it continues the best way to try and interpret things in my view is to assume that both the principals in this episode are entirely acting out of self-interest the johnson johnson camp is trying to uh to burnish his image as someone loyal to the tory party very possible to try and uh contemplate him returning as an MP to try and facilitate another tit for tat in the leadership, in which case he needs Sunak on side to allow his very late selection in a suitability in a suitably cushy seat. Um 
again, the idea of Boris Johnson returning after everything that's happened, um, pure, absolute uh, political suicide, uh, if they did that. Absolute political suicide. We've talked about that, I don't know how many numerous times. The desperate, delusional fantasies that you can sort of bring, bring him back and everything will be hunky-dory again. Um, also, he will have another shot at the leadership. Will he win this time? Who knows? But <laughs> I think Conservative MPs are certainly going to be very, very not um, pleased about that. Even the ones who are left, um, <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens if in that fight, uh, or in that, uh, that leadership contest, if that happens. Anyway, meanwhile... Doris is almost certainly correct that Sunak's operation is trying to dangle the prospect of Boris's Red Wall tour uh, to ward off defections. Having at least 40 MPs wandering around thinking that they are uh, having been made the politically equivalent of human sacrifices by a PM who has ruthlessly pivoted to a blue wall strategy is far from ideal. And that is where we are looking at the moment, that the Red Wall MPs feel very, very, very much ignored. Uh, since Sunak has came in. Um, Boris used to sort of big them up all the time, give them some, you know, token things here and there. Um, but since, well, Sunak's come in, there has been none of that. They do very, very much feel like they are going to be sacrificed at the next uh, general election. And, hey, if that is how Rishi Sunak is, is treating them, then, hey, you've got nothing to lose. But if that is now being the, the offer, that if you defect, we are gonna, you know, you know, Boris's Red Wall tour is suddenly gonna come to your town. Um, maybe that might be enough to dissuade them, at least maybe keep them in line. Uh, like I say, we'll find out <laughs> probably in the, in the next couple of days. So if this is the case, this is desperate stuff from Downing Street. Oh, it's more than desperate. It is more than desperate from Downing Street if they are planning a a Boris Johnson circus during the um during the general election. It is not going to be good. <sighs> anyway, the days of factory workers uh hand painting we love Boris signs are long gone. While he may not think attracting uh the loathing in the red war. Uh, that he does among the certain chattering classes of the of the Tufnell Park, neither is he uh, viewed as remotely reliable. After all, he was supposed to turn Britain back into a low immigration nation instead of opening the floodgates even wider. Perhaps Sunak is currently stringing Johnson along, using the prospect of trying to put him on his shoulder to the wheel to try and keep the Red Wall contingent on side until it is too late for them to jump ship. That could be possible. I will admit that. Maybe that is something you do. You look at, oh look, I'm 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 you know bringing Johnson back. Am I or am I not? Ooh. And hopefully, you do keep the Red Wall contingent on side. Like you say, that can be the threat. You know, to to try and stop the the any more potential defectors. Like say, for EMPs thinking I'm going to be sacrificed at the next general election. Sunak has said clearly. We ain't seeing the red wall as a viable strategy. We are focusing on the blue wall. What have you got to lose from defecting? You've got you've got very very little to lose from defecting. Honestly, at this moment in time, uh, even the fact that supposedly there is still that trice offer for MPs to defect with that guaranteed five year salary, there's still not a lot to lose. There's still not a lot to lose from defecting. Um, so, but perhaps Johnson is stringing Sunak along, dangling the possibility of lending the PM his campaigning, uh, campaigning bio until he gets the green light for a safe seat return. Of course, both things could be true at the same time. That could be very true. Johnson might be trying to, uh, angle all this and that the rumors of Boris's return could just be yet another attempt to try and get a, a safe seat. We'll see, but I think getting a seat potentially this late in the game is going to be very difficult. We still don't know where the general election is going to be, but Johnson being offered such a safe seat is going to upset a lot of people in the Tory party. And then, of course, it, it blows Sunak's whole idea that he is this responsible, changing face of, of the Tory party completely out of the water because you've brought 
Johnson pack in. Uh, it, it would be political suicide to attempt this. Absolutely reckless beyond all measure about. It's not just desperate. It is bottom of the barrel scraping stuff. It's kind of beyond that. You've gone beyond the barrel and you are hitting the core of the earth at this point. That's how deep they are trying to go. Um, yet, surely all can see that this man is well past his zenith. And while Johnson may make a modest recovery from his from his very gruesome uh, Nadia, Sunak is fast approaching our two and a half term uh, premiers are, are bathing in, in bathos. The nation now needs to be introduced to new characters if it is ever to find a Tory story compelling again. Um, yeah, um, bringing Boris back, um, madness. No one would do it. No one, honestly, uh, as, as, a, as a campaign manager, would ever contemplate bringing Boris back. This would be like saying, oh yeah, we're going to have Liz Truss come out and talk about how financially responsible the Tory party was. Yeah, I can see that speech going down terribly. <laughs> like I say, Hindenburg, uh, have, have you heard of it? <laughs> but if they, if they want to do that, or as the case may be, maybe this is being floated by the Boris camp in an attempt to try and uh, you know, getting back, maybe get him a safe seat. Maybe there is this whole thing about maybe it is being used as a threat to um, keep the the red wall MPs on side. It's it's all could turn very very interesting. And like I say, it's not going to take that too many defections. If there are forty MPs wandering around saying my chances aren't looking good, Richard Trice is offering a guaranteed five year salary. What have I got to lose from defecting? There's very little they've got to lose at this point. So it would not shock me if we saw more defections this week. Um, but like I say, the biggest time to affect those defections will be in PMQs, and it will be MPs walking over to join uh, Lee Anderson. Um, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Uh, but after that, Maybe the ship has sailed at that point. We'll see if anyone does join Anderson in that, or whether uh, party loyalty uh, reigns supreme. But if not, I will be not too surprised if more people join Anderson. It has been the constant rumour now that, you know, Trice and other people in reform have been trying to tempt them away for quite some time. And of course, they've got Anderson. Maybe this is you get maybe one or two more. I'm not expecting any more than that. Uh, if we, if, if all 40 walked over, that would be shocking. Um, oh, that would be the end of Rishi Sunak. You, you would have to call a general election at that point, or he would face a, a vote of no confidence in, in him if that happened. Um, but that is very, very likely not to happen. So we'll see. But Anyway, of course, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below. And of course, as always, we'll see you all next time.